Welcome to Direct U.S. Immigration's channel, where you get direct access to our most up-to-date immigration and global mobility space. My name is Matreya Brown, and I'm going to talk about frequently asked questions about the CR1 spousal visa. You're not going to want to miss out on this one. Stay tuned. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Matreya Brown, and I am a U.S. immigration attorney based in Washington, D.C. I am also the principal attorney at Direct U.S. Immigration, where we work with clients in all 50 states and around the world. Before we start, click on the like and subscribe button to follow our immigration hub to get the latest immigration information that could be vital to your case. And also, be sure to stick around until the end to get a bonus tip on removing conditions after getting a CR1 immigrant visa. So here are the frequently asked questions about the CR1 spousal immigrant visa. But first, what is the difference between a K3 visa and a CR1 visa? So both visas are uh, designed for foreign nationals who are married to US citizens and wish to enter the country as lawful permanent residents. Now, if you and your spouse have been married for more than two years, then the IR from the IR1 on the visa stands for immediate relative. If you and your spouse got married less than two years ago, then you would apply for the CR1, uh, so from conditional resident, so the CR1 spousal visa. Now one of the frequently asked questions include, can I still obtain a CR1 or IR1 spousal visa if I'm in a same-sex marriage? The answer is yes, absolutely. So thanks to the Supreme Court's decision in Windsor v. United States, the Defense of Marriage Act, also known as DOMA, was deemed unconstitutional. And as a result, all marriage-based visa applications are to be assessed in the same way, regardless of sexual orientation. Another common question is, how do I get a Social Security card once I successfully secure a CR1 or IR1 spousal visa? So when completing the online immigrant visa application, you can opt to receive a social security card after you arrive in the United States. In this case, you would receive the card within six weeks of admission into the country. If for whatever reason you haven't elected to receive a social security card, you will have to apply for one with the social security administration inside of the US. Another common question is, can a CR1 visa spouse work? So yes, the CR1 visa spouse can work upon entering the US. Under a CR1 visa, your passport is stamped and acts as a temporary green card. A permanent green card is then issued several months later. Can a CR1 visa spouse travel outside of the US? So yes, the CR1 visa spouse can travel outside of the US. Essentially, you enjoy all of the rights and responsibilities of a US permanent resident. However, there's a catch. So if you spend too much time outside of the US, you might lose your green card, especially when you have obtained your conditional residence based on the grounds of marriage. Long separations from your spouse might signal to the authorities that your marriage is not real. Another common question is how long is my marriage-based green card valid for? So the CR1 visa lasts for two years. And 90 days prior to the visa's expiration, and if still married to the US citizen, you and your spouse will jointly file Form I-751, which is the petition to remove conditions, in order to move to an IR-1 visa. Now, IR-1 visas are valid for 10 years. Uh, it is the 10-year green card, and it can be renewed indefinitely or until the foreign spouse can apply for U.S. citizenship. Now, one caveat to this is so long as you are maintaining ties to the U.S. and you can indicate that you intend to remain as a permanent resident, then you can keep that green card. Another frequently asked question is, does my sponsor need to reside in the U.S.? No, technically not. So they need to meet the domicile requirement, which is possible even if they live abroad. So the easiest way to meet this requirement is to live in the United States or one of its territories. Failing that, they can provide documentation showing one of the following. So they are an employee at an approved organization, they are living outside of the U.S. temporarily, or they intend to move back to the United States as soon as you, their spouse, are admitted into the United States. Another common question is, 
What if my spouse was a lawful permanent resident when they initially submitted the Form I-130 but has since become a U.S. citizen? So in this case, they will need to upgrade their petition by submitting the following evidence to NBC. A copy of Certificate of Naturalization and a copy of their U.S. passport, so just the biodata page. And the reason for this is that in these particular circumstances, typically U.S. citizens' cases are prioritized over green card holders. Another question is, what documents will I need to get either a CR1 or an IR1 visa? So the answer to this question will vary depending on the country where you're applying from, uh, but in general, you'll need the following. A passport that will remain valid for six months after you arrive into the United States, an affidavit of support, which is Form I-864, uh, Form DS-260, two passport-style photos, uh, they're little two-by-two two photos, um, all civil documents require, uh, requested by the embassy, and this will likely include your birth certificate, your marriage certificates, police certifications, and any potential military records, if any. And then, of course, your medical exam paperwork. As promised, here's some bonus information that you may not know about. So, how do you remove conditions after getting a CR1 visa? So, you will need to file Form I-751, which is the petition to remove conditions on residents within 90 days of the CR1 visa expiring. This application allows you to change your two-year conditional green card to a permanent 10-year green card. Through this form, you will again explain that your marriage is genuine and not just for immigration benefits, even though you initially got your green card shortly after getting married. You will also need to prove your marriage has continued for the past two years. Now, this evidence could include statements from a joint bank account, birth certificates of children born during that period, or property deeds with both names listed. You must complete Form I-751, provide the supporting documents, pay the filing fee, and submit your application to USCIS. If you are separated or divorced from your spouse by the time Form I-751 is required to be filed, there is an avenue to file it alone, but you will have a higher burden to prove that the marriage was in fact real. Additionally, if you miss this little bit amount of time that is required to actually file this form, you must have extreme uh, reasons, extreme circumstances as to why it wasn't filed timely. Otherwise, you will no longer be in green card status. I hope you found this video helpful. Subscribe if this content or information helps you in any way. Comment below if you want me to talk about something in specific and share this resource widely because you never know who needs answers to these questions. Additionally, if you have any specific questions about this video as they pertain to your unique circumstances, please schedule a consultation with us also at the link below and I'll see you in the next video.